President Bola Ahmed Tinobu should be impeached. Senate President Goswe Akpabio should be removed. Peter Obi, on the other side, can never be the president of Nigeria because he is a betrayer. Namdi Kano should be released. These are the current topics, or should I just say, the most important topics or trending news on ground. Some people are fighting for division, whereas some are fighting for good governors. But the big question is, will any of this ever happen in Nigeria? Once again, you are welcome back to my channel, Connect React, where we give you all the trendy hot topics or news happening in our country. Be it politics or anything, we got you covered. Be cool. Support this channel by subscribing to this YouTube channel today, Connect React. Subscribing is totally free. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss any of the important or trendy topics or news happening in this country. Well, once again, I'm back with another update. I want you to take a listen to this message from the former IPOP leader because he's currently in jail and they have a current new leader. It'd be like, say, this man don't see the future. Literally, in this video, everything he said from the beginning to the end is nothing but the truth and even they are currently happening. Why the people should never give for Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the president? The Fulani, Maiti Allah, because even right now, the president is being trended by the same man, Maiti Allah, in Namdekanu, warned the people. But the truth is, we Nigeria divide because that is what some people are fighting for. They are clamoring for peace, and the peace they want is that until Nigeria divide, there can never be peace in this country. I beg, watch the video. Leave your honest comments at the comment section of this video. Like I said, this man in Namdekano is said the law, although this is an old video, but this particular message is trending at the moment because everything is said is happening right now in this country. Once again, don't forget to support this channel by subscribing to this YouTube channel today. It is totally free. Thank you for subscribing. Enjoy. Coming back shortly. I said it that at that time, and I still repeat it. Unless Peter will be my brother returns to Africa, he will not achieve anything politically. I'm repeating it. Why? Isaiah 55 11, my word cannot go out of a return void without fulfilling the purpose of which it was sent. The word I've gone for now, it can never return until it has fulfilled that purpose. He knows because he took a vow. That he will never leave Apoga. That any day he leaves Apoga, let his family die. Everybody in his family die. He said it now. But he still left Apoga. Thinking that uh, leaving Apoga, Apoga will die. Has Apoga died? Everything about us is in the hands of God. Psalm 139 15. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I had already known you. Even the number of days allotted to you have been recorded in my books before time began. Nothing will happen to you unless your time comes. But be very careful how you swear. The Bible says we should not swear, even with our heads, because we cannot produce a strand of hair on our heads. Why did he make such a vow? I told our Yoruba friends that this thing you are supporting, this very evil government you are supporting, when they tagged IPOB a terrorist group, you supported them. You are going to pay a very heavy price for it. Had the Yoruba journalist stood up and said, IPOB did nothing wrong, you cannot tag them a terrorist group, believe you me, by today, you will not have Fulani people occupying Yoruba forests and farmlands. Because in this life, what goes around comes around. If you support evil today because you're benefiting, eventually that evil will overwhelm you. The same thing happened to APC. The same thing happened to Fulani Caliphate. They brought in terrorists from all across the Sahel. They brought them into Nigeria to try to force Jonathan out of office. Now Jonathan is out of office. They are now, of course, reaping what they sold, all of them. 
Do you see that the North is in as much disarray as we have in the South, if not worse? When they were grooming and breeding these terrorists, they thought they were doing it just to assume political power. They never knew there was another dimension to it. That these terrorists that they all created will come back to consume them. And that is what is happening today. It is the spillover of their same, should I say, terror effects that we are feeling right across the South. That was why we said with the launch of ESN that we cannot allow that nonsense to continue. They know they, have, they are not going to make any headway in the East. They have turned their attention to the West. They are forcibly occupying their land and telling them that they cannot do anything about it. A whole presidency in a country openly and brazenly supporting terrorists. All of you watching and listening all over the world, you know that Mieti Allah is a terrorist organization. You know that. They have killed. They have said that Benue State is theirs for the taking as a spoil of war. All of you are aware of it. You know what they are doing. Anywhere you have Fulani headsmen, terrorists for that matter. They tell you, oh, they, they, are, they are pastoralists. They are, they are allowed to do their businesses in the forest. All of you are aware of it. But you kept quiet, hoping that somehow Tinubu will emerge as the president, or an Igbo man will come as the president, and your family will start enjoying. But in the meantime, you have no more farmlands, you have no more forests, you have nowhere you can call your own home. The same stupidity exhibited by, by Hausa peasants that enabled Fulani to take Sokoto from them, that enabled Fulani to take Katsina from them, that enabled Fulani to take even Kanu from them. Every Hausa land is occupied either by a Fulani MA or a Fulani governor. Some of you don't want to reason, you don't ever, ever learn. That the main aim of Fulani is to conquer your land and enslave you. Look at how some people today, as I wrote yesterday, they are worse than a discarded tissue paper. They are worth nothing. Only their language is what is relevant in their lives. Everything else is lost. All of you are repeating the exact same mistakes that the house has made. That is why they are in trouble. And that is why they can never ever come out of it. They are all suffering from what I would, an advanced version of the Stockholm Syndrome. Can you imagine that these people came into their land and took it over and they cannot do anything about it? Hauser is gone. It took Fulani very many years before they came out of their shell to say we are Fulani. Remember before, many years ago, they told you we are Hauser Fulani. We are Hauser Fulani. We are, because that time, their, uh, their subjugation of the Hausa race hasn't been completed. Now they have completed it. Have they not completed it? And what is happening right now? I ask you what is happening now. Fulani have now come out to tell you we are Fulani people. Is that not what they are saying now? They are not telling you we are Fulani. No more Hausa Fulani. What does that tell you? That the Hausa race no longer exists. Do you want the same thing to happen to you? Do you want the same thing to happen to your families? To your villages? Do you want your towns, let's say Obomosho, to be renamed into a Fulani name? Do you want Tonesha to answer a Fulani name? Forget all the nonsense about unity of Nigeria. All they are uniting against is your common interest. Unless you prefer epileptic um, a power supply, unless you prefer to live your whole life without running water, unless you want to live in abject poverty and deprivation, your only alternative is a revolution. Let nobody discourage you. All the countries of the world doing very, very well, they all went through a revolution. You must go through it. If you don't go through it, you can never ever survive. As a people, Fulani will take you over. As simple as that. This very day, we are making it known to the whole world that the Muslim extremist dictatorship masquerading as a secular democratic government must be demolished. It must be demolished for you to survive. They have to be demolished. If you do not demolish them, your lives will end very, very miserably. I assure you. I assure you. The zoo is on its knees. Everybody knows that the zoo called Nigeria is on its knees. Who doesn't know that?
Everybody knows. Nothing is functioning. You are all aware of it. When they say go and register for name or whatever name or whatever rubbish is called, all of you trooped out without legislation, without any laws. Fulani can control you however they like. Once they announce it, Yoruba newspapers very foolishly and stupidly will support them because they want to be as the president. And you are all dying every blessed day. You are all dying every day. Had you people risen up to say that what is happening in Nigeria is bad, there is no way that pa Fasorenti's daughter will not be alive today. That is the pl price you pay for duplicity. That is the price you pay for treachery. That is the price you will continue to pay until you rise up and say enough is enough. It is up to you to do it. You did it during NSARS. You can do it again. Can you imagine Fulani people telling you, if you remove Fulanis from Yoruba forest, imagine Fulani telling you, if you remove them from your ancestral lands, there will be war and you are panicking. And you have not asked yourself, why are they not saying something about the East? Why did they not say to Eastern Security Network? Why did they not say to me, if you don't stop evacuating Fulani terrorists from the forest, there will be war? Because they know they understand psychologically that you don't have what it takes to resist them. Do you know why Boronu State is still alive? Why you still have the Kanuri people in Boronu today? Was because they resisted the Fulani centuries ago. You have to go back to history to understand how Nigeria came into existence. Fulani has been expanding from day one, from Senegambia. All the way from Senegambia, they've been expanding, 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 and now they are in Okiwe. All the way from Senegambia, they are now in Okiwe. And you're asking us to somehow fold our hands and keep quiet because of 2023, because one idiot is going to come out to become a president because of that rubbish, because of that nonsensical notion we should fold our hands and wait until we are overrun by the Janjaweed from the Sahel. Is that how reasonable people think? Is that how people that wish to survive as a race, is that how they reason? It is very, very shocking that some of you do not understand what the fallen is having in store for you. Very, very soon it is going to happen. And when it happens, your eyes will clear. And about whom you will see it very clearly. I was warning you in 2014, 2015, 2016, they said he's a warmonger. He's a, he's a warmongering. I went to America and I told World War Congress that this war you are avoiding is going to come to your villages. They said, no, it's not going to happen. What is happening today? When Yoruba was supporting this, the dead idiot called Buhari, did I not warn them that this evil you are supporting will consume you? They never listened. They never wanted to listen. Hey, IPOB is a terrorist group. You are trying to divide Nigeria. But Mietiana is not. People that you are calling bandits, they, who, have you heard anybody come out to say, please, Buhari, since presidency is there defending terrorists in the forest, why don't you proscribe them? No, you cannot proscribe a Flanagan group. Never. And all of you, we are supporting evil. When there is a, the proscribed IPOB, proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, these are Yoruba journalists writing junk. Every day they keep writing rubbish. But their land is under siege. Their land is under siege. And the Fulani will take it. It doesn't take time. So I am here today to encourage them that they must stand tall and be very strong. Resolute. That is what Fulani does. They control the media. They have well-paid consultants all over the world doing their bidding for them. They have that, uh, that uh, woman at UN trying to, to, to lobby the world that everything is okay in the zoo called Nigeria. But you and I know that the zoo is not okay. You and I know the game plan of the Fulani. And what are you doing about it? Nothing. Every day you read, you lament, you complain. Every day you read, you lament. And that's all you do. That is all you do. You read, you lament, you complain. You do nothing about it. Your lives are being taken away from you. Your forests are being occupied. Your mothers are being raped. Your daughters are being abducted. And the whole national government, presidency, is supporting such people. And you're telling me that Nigeria is viably sustainable. Is that what you're telling me? That somehow this contraption is sustainable, it is viable. It can never be. Because the more you stay in one Nigeria, 
the more you are inviting the Fulanis to take over your ancestral lands, to take over your villages, and to make life a misery for you. That is the end game. That is the outcome. If you doubt me, go and do a bit of research. Ask yourself, who are the Hausa people? Who are the Nupe people? Who are the Bachama people? All of these people were steamrolled by the Fulani march to the, to the Atlantic Ocean. And now they're in Yoruba land. They're in their forests. They are in their forests. And who is going to drive them away from there, if not the Yoruba youths? Forget about your, your useless governors. Your elders are very strong. I love Yoruba elders. The way they behave, the way they talk. Very, very strong. They said they support uh, uh, Akere Dolu. This is governor of Ondo State. They support him in what he's doing. People must come out to say that enough is enough. When you travel to the north, do you live in the forest in the north? The Igbo people are in Sabangari in Kanu. Are they living in, 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 in uh, how, of course, it's house land. Are they living in the forest? They came to the town. They work very hard. They build houses. They build mansions. They develop the entire place. Is that not what they do? What are Fulani people doing in our forest? Nobody can answer that question. They say that they're pastoralists. I want some of you who, some of you who have had your breakfast this morning, please go to your fridge or go to where you keep your, your beverages and you will see pig milk. Pig. Some of us, we are raised on pig milk. For how many years now? And uh, you keep asking yourself, what is pig milk? Pig milk is mineral the same, the same milk that the cows produce in Holland can be produced in the zoo. Tell me the country in the world aspiring to be a member of the UN Security Council where you move cattle from place to place. Are you people, are you people well at all? You so-called Nigerians, are you, are you normal in the brain? I'm asking you a simple question. Show me a country that aspires to be in the 21st century, moving cattle from place to place, telling me they're grazing. Which country is that? Please tell me. Some, all of you don't have any shame. When you have people, an entire presidency, coming out to defend a very primitive, archaic agricultural practice, then you know you're in very serious mess. You are in one almighty trouble, I'm telling you. You people are in a mess. The Holland that you get your big milk from, do they move cattle from, from Rotterdam to, to, to Amsterdam? I'm asking you a simple question. But they produce the pig milk that you're drinking every blessed day. Why can't Fulani produce pig milk in, in, in Sokoto? Why can't they produce carnation milk in Kanu? They have the cattle. Before the white man came, did you see any Fulani in your forest? All these people talking rubbish about uh, movement of cattle and movement of... I'm asking you, before Britain came and handed over Nigeria to Fulani, Ask your grandfathers, please, or your grandmothers. Ask them. All this nonsense we are hearing today in this so-called one, I want to tell you the dangers of one Nigeria. All this nonsense you are hearing today about one Nigeria, Fulani in, in our forest, Fulani in our village. Before the white man came, did you see Fulani moving their cattle all over the place? Did we not have meat to eat? They will answer these questions for you. Because sometimes in Africa we don't reason very well. The way we reason is disjointed. It is disjointed. I don't, I can't understand for the life of me why instead of them to waste all that money arming and equipping this ginger with army Mihetiala to come and conquer you and I, why don't they open a milk factory somewhere in the north and bring the milk down south? I'm sure, I'm sure southerners will buy it. After all, pig milk comes all the way from Holland. Pig milk all the way from Holland. Now you understand it because of the way you people reason why can't you produce is it difficult to produce milk the same milk that comes out naturally from the order of the of the cow why can't you put it can it somewhere process pasteurize it and send it to 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 to, 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 to eat to drink or to do whatever with all over the world that is what is happening in fact they produce so much milk in europe that they throw it they pour it away why can't you do the same thing a whole president claiming they are in the 21st century are supporting a very primitive practice of moving cattle from place to you all of you you're not ashamed of yourselves you have no shame as somebody will say your shame is shaming me i'm telling you you people from the zoo i'm ashamed of your ignorance and stupidity you people are hopeless completely hopeless one day now, i want you to come and say we're, we're intellectuals and you're moving cattle from Kafanchan to, to, to Ahoda. You, you, you are intellectuals. You are intellectualizing. You are in the 21st century, you are moving cattle, driving cattle, Nama, 
from over 300 buyers. It's claiming you, you Yoruba, Yoruba forest is a place for you to be in. You want to relax, Yoruba forest is your every Nigerian is free to live anywhere uh, and do their business anywhere, yes. But when a Igbo man tries to sell beer in Kano, you destroy it. You destroy their, uh, their businesses, you destroy their hotels, but you can come down to the south and live anywhere you like and grace anywhere you like. And you're telling me that is a country, that is one Nigeria for you? Chineke Merunabara. The Fulanese we are talking, they call them the Funa movement. Our attention has been drawn to a decree credited to one Rotimi Akredolu asking Fulani people who have occupied some forests in Nondo state to quit. We are also aware of another incident in Oyo state where an illiterate political talk gave quit notice to Fulani people to leave their territories, which are now their irreversible homes. Are you listening? Fulani are now saying that Yoruba forest is now their irreversible homes. They have now occupied Yoruba land in perpetuity. And I want to let my Yoruba friends understand this. You see, in life, anytime you support evil, evil will come back to haunt you. All of you never knew that IPOB and this Gafra movement for was for your liberation. Some of you saw maybe the oil and gas from Gafra land. If they go now, we'll have access to oil and gas. In the process of having your eyes fixated on oil and gas, your forest is gone. Do you understand it? There is nothing more precious in life than freedom. Freedom is very important. And I need you to understand this this very morning. Every Yoruba person supporting Fulani, you are setting up yourself to become like the Hausa people. Remember when Hausa was supporting Fulani? We are Hausa Fulani. We are Hausa Fulani. Where are the Hausa people today? I ask you. Where are those Hausa people today? Do you see them anymore? Those saying we are house of Fulani, we are house of Fulani. Do you see them again today? Do you see them? I'm asking you. No, because Fulani have completely overwhelmed them. It's called emasculation. Completely emasculated them. Look at what they're doing in the East. In the East, they come to the East. I will tell you, oh, oh, you want to be the president or vice? Yeah, 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 yeah. They say, give us land for Ruga. They give them land. The soldiers of Kadu did that law, Banta. They've taken it over in forever and ever. Give us land in your state. Hope of them prove to us that you are stood. Give us land in Olu. Hope of them give them land in Olu. We can go and kill people in, in your people. We can kill for them. How many Fulani governors are prepared to kill bandits? I didn't say normal people. I'm talking about armed, dangerous bandits. How many Fulani governors? Go and read your newspapers. You will see it there. Fulani governors are negotiating with them, giving them arms, giving them vehicles, making sure that their life is no longer in misery. But see, they come down to the south. They tell you, give us land for Ruga. Go and kill your people to prove to us that you're one Nigerian. The problem you people have in Nigeria is this. Your journalists, you see people punch newspaper, tribune, vanguard, and nation, they are your second worst enemies, I'm telling you the truth. They can never ever be objective in their reportage, never ever ever. That's why all of you are suffering. But you don't know it. They were the same people used to scuttle the NSAS protest. Of course, some of you went about looking for indom in warehouses, typical black people. Any revolution that is coming now, you must stand very firm. They'll say, oh, you're Igbo. Oh, you're Yoruba. Oh, you're from Europe. Don't join them. It's our turn in 2023. If you do this, you will scuttle our chances of, of becoming the president in 2023. Ask yourself, all of them that have been president from, from time immortal, what benefit has it brought to you as a human being? Absolutely nothing. So you have nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing to lose. You look at them now, how they have now descended on Yoruba people asking them to concede, give us your forest, we must graze, we must do this, we must do that. And slowly before your eyes, they are giving in, they are capitulating, they are allowing them to go. Oh, uh, if you don't give it to us, Tinubu will not be president in 2023. Tinubu won't be the president. That's what I'm saying to you. And foolishly, you will agree and hand over your land to them. And once they take your land over from you, look at Hausa. Because there is a saying where we come from. If you want to know what your life is going to become in the future, look at Hausa people. 
If you want to, if you want to, to understand, you no know, appreciate or appreciate, I will say, the life that you are about to bequeath to your children and grandchildren. Look at Hausa people. Is there any Hausa governor today? Is there any Hausa emir? Is there land though? Katsina is Hausa land. Kanu is Hausa land. Sokoto is Hausa land. Hausa people own it, indigenous to those areas. I'm asking you this question. Is there any Hausa man who is an emir in the north? The answer is no. The same thing is going to happen to you. If you don't rise up now to break, I'm not even asking people to break this. You demand for what rightfully belongs to you, your freedom. The freedom to decide. The freedom to write a constitution if you prefer. The freedom to live with whoever you want to live with. That is what we are asking for. But most people misunderstood what we are saying. And today, almost everything we have said about the zoo has come to pass. Everything we have told you, everything I told you has come to pass, hasn't it? Everything. And some people are still questioning and arguing. They said, Fulani will resist by all means necessary, including armed resistance, any attempt to forcefully eject them from the forest. Yoruba, you must ask yourself this question. When we were pursuing them from a boy, why didn't they say, why didn't they say something about, uh, about ESN on Namdekan? Why? Have you asked yourself that question? Because they know we are prepared to die to defend our land. They understand that very well. That is the only language the Fulani understand. You cannot say to Fulani, oh, let us have a Fulani president. And after that, all will be well. Never, ever, ever. They will continue to expand. They will continue to, they will continue to identify idiots in your midst, traitors, saboteurs in your midst. They will promise them heaven and earth. They will give them anything they ask for in order to ensure that they get into you. They subjugate you. Look at Yoruba and the Loring. Yoruba, how did you lose a Loring? You lost a Loring because somebody thought or felt that by aligning himself with what he felt was a superior full and force, he can defeat his own people. Afonja, what happened? As a result of that miscalculation, the great Yoruba race lost a Loring to Fulani Caliphate. That is why in a Loring you have an emir of a Loring, not an Oba of a Loring, answerable to Sokoto. That is where Lai Muhammad comes from. You can see them. Sokoto slaves in Yoruba land. When I say that it's, 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 a, it's not religion, it has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with the mentality of a conquered people. Now they have left the Lord and having taken a Lord and taken it to Zogoto, they now want to come into Oyo, they want to come into Ondo. Once they take over all those places, it's over for the Yoruba race. Over for you. No, ne, never again will anybody rise a man of honor or integrity in Yoruba land. Never ever. It would only be the stooge. Look at what's happening in the East. Only fallen stooges can now imagine the East. It, they, it took them very many years, nearly 50 years, to accomplish this very simple task. Of making sure that everybody, be it Ohaneze, be it Pandev, be it governor, anybody you're bringing out must come to the north to swear allegiance to the caliphate. All of them, ban on. Is there any political godfather in the east? There is none. They all go to the north to go and swear allegiance to the Janjaweed. That is why our life is in a mess. That is why they can bring someone like Obiozo and make him the... Um, the Ohaneze uh, uh, President General. In front of our eyes, oh, in front of Koro Koro, and what did they, they bribe, BB, they gave money to BBC, they gave money to, to all Zoom newspapers, they started to trumpet, oh, Biosa, oh, Apex Group, Apex, Apex, Apex. You saw them holding their meeting under, under a canopy, a ton without shame, a whole Ohaneze. Under sand, ton canopy, canopy. Maybe you saw it disgraceful and shameful. Talking rubbish. The man looks like a ginger weed anyway. Talking nonsense. These are people they have prepared for you to sell you down the drain. By the time the Fulanese are done with you, believe you me, if you don't rise up now to fight for your freedom, by the time Fulanese are done with you, you'll be more useless than a house at present. Doing uh, Babi Allah somewhere in Zaria. That is the future that awaits you. Now, our people must understand this very clearly, especially my Yoruba brothers and sisters. It is about time you stop supporting evil. That evil is in Asorok. 
That evil is a, a gang, a gang of, of reprobates calling themselves presidency. The more after, who you, so, you keep on supporting evil in the zoo, the more your land will be taken from you. The more your daughters will be raped and abducted, the more your sons will be slaughtered in cold blood. And under the one Nigeria, there is nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Because one idiot that the groomed will rise up and say to you, Oh no, it's one Nigeria. There is crime everywhere. Uh, haven't you heard about Zamfara? Haven't you heard about um, Katsina? There is crime everywhere. That is not the case. But the crimes you have in the north, the insecurity you have in the north is as a direct consequence of their own action. They groomed them. Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, ISIS in West Africa, Boko Haram, Fulani headsmen, bandits, all of them. Who brought them to Nigeria? Is Fulani? Fulani brought them into Nigeria. El Rufai brought them in. Bauchi State Governor brought them in. Are you people deaf and dumb and stupid? When you come out and you pretend, oh, we are one, one Nigeria, go and show me. Somebody was asking, where is the boundary? Uh, where would the boundary of uh, Biafra begin? And I asked the fool, where, where, where did the boundary of Nigeria begin? People from Niger come in and go as they like. Most of these idiots are from Niger. They are building a pipeline to Niger. They are building a railway line to Niger. They are building roads to Niger. We are asked where the money comes from, which is Biafra land. We don't have those infrastructure. No, we don't. But you're taking our money. You come to Izombe. You come to Ohaji. You come to Ebema. You come to, to, to Aguleri. You come to uh, Ebony. You take our resources, sell it, get the money, and now you're building the way to Niger Republic. And you want me to be happy with you. Clap for you all. Nigeria is doing well. One Nigeria. I think you, 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 maybe not again. you are insane. You come to my land, you take our oil, you take our gas, you take our manpower, you take everything, our VAT, our tax that we pay. You are now building a road from Katsina to Niger. Airport in Niger. Refinery in Niger. You take all your crude oil from my land, you take it to Niger, you refine it, you bring it back to me as a refined petroleum. Or as PPS as you call it. And you're telling me that that country is viable. You're telling me that Nigeria should be supported. We are in one Nigeria. We are not going anywhere. And you're dying every day. Because those that they appointed to speak for you, they gave them money and positions. So that they will come out on the pages of newspapers to give the world the misleading impression that everything is okay. When things are not okay. Go through the statements of Ohaneze and see the contradictions in it. Nigeria is not working. We are marginalized. And then you come back and say, Nigeria is one. We must stay in it together. Are you not foolish? These are the useless intellectuals that you have. On one hand, you say Nigeria is not working. You are marginalized. You are being discriminated against. You are suffering. They are killing you everywhere. And you come back to the same place and say, Nigeria must be one. Had Nigerians gotten together to say they want to be part of this useless contraption, that's entirely their business. I mean, Democrats have subscribed to it. But have you asked yourself this question? Why is it that all those asking you to remain in one Nigeria has something to gain from Nigeria or they have benefited in the past? Nothing more, nothing less. I saw the letter that Atika Baka wrote to, to President Biden. In it, Atika Baka said to come, come and help us fight terrorism in order to ensure that there will be no regional destabilization. That is their game plan at the U.S. State Department for very many years, until we stepped in. They keep throwing out these lies. Once Nigeria breaks up, there will be destabilization in the entire region. I said that because you don't understand African history. Most of these people are not educated. When I say, they say I'm insulting them. No, I'm not insulting you. Most of you are not educated. In Africa, we are tribal creatures in Africa. In Africa, we are tribal creatures in Africa. We always go back to our village where we are born, where our umbilical cord, our long, where it was buried. That's where we come from. That is why every Christmas, Easter, um, New Year festival, or uh, August meeting, you see us migrating back to where we come from. And I keep saying these things to Africans, they don't understand it. They don't understand it. Everywhere in Africa during Christmas, if you like, be in South Africa, if you like, let it be in Kenya, you let it be in Rwanda, everybody from the capital goes to the village. If you go to Accra, the same thing happens. This past Christmas, if you like, go to Kotonou, 
go to Yaoundé in Cameroon, everybody living in the capital cities of Africa, they go back to their villages. They go back to their tribes where they come from. Do they do that in the, in the Western world? During Christmas, these people migrating from, oh, I come from Florida, I'm going to Florida. No, you don't. Because people come from where they are born. We come from where our ancestors were born. That is the difference between black people in Africa and those from Europe and other parts of the world. We come from, so if you ask somebody, where do you come from? He or she will mention their village. That is what makes us Africans. It's very, very unique. If you destroy that, you are finished as a people. In Africa, we are tribal. First and foremost, we belong to our tribe where we come from. That is why our people need to appreciate this. Very, very critical that Africa is restructured to recognize where people come from. All these artificial creations by Europeans, Nigeria, this, that, that, all that rubbish. That is why you can never ever make any progress for the next six billion years. You can never ever make any progress in the zoo. Why is it, if we are not tribal, why would the whole presidency come out, Fulani presidency come out and say, we are defending Fulani headsmen? A presidency of the whole of Nigeria, so to speak. It is because by instinct, we are tribal beings in Africa. That is why Nigeria is unsustainable. That is why the man from Ishekiri has to vote to say, this is where I want to belong to. That is why referendum is the only way forward. That is why Africa is poor. Africans must recognize that this is who we are forever and ever. Only a revolution can solve this very problem because under a revolution, the powers that be, those that be making your life a misery, will be overthrown. Nobody will say it's a coup anymore. It is called popular uprising. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody deceive you. And that is why today some soldiers are listening and they are resigning from the army. How can you be a soldier in the Nigerian army and your village is being occupied by a full army headsmen? Imagine those from uh, uh, those from Oyo or Ondo serving in the Nigerian army. These are Yoruba my Yoruba brothers who are serving in the Nigerian army. You are from Yoruba. You are serving in the Nigerian army, doing one Nigeria. But your village is being occupied by a Fulani. The same people you are serving or you claim you are serving, your village, your village is under occupation by them. And to make matters worse, those you are serving under their flag, one Nigeria and the Arabic inscription, or should I say the motto of uh, Ottoman Danfodio, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. You don't know that the Nigerian emblem, the army emblem of Nigeria is the motto of Ottoman and Fodio that he used to conquer Hausa people. You don't know that it is there. That's what they're using. You are fighting under the banner of your conquerors. Maybe in Sambisa forest. And now they are sending their advanced strike force into your village. And you're doing one Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian soldier. I'm a Nigerian army. That is why I commend the 127 soldiers that have resigned so far from the army. If you don't do these things I'm asking you to do, you will. Uh, when the time comes, as I'm telling them now, remember 2015, remember 2014, remember 2013, I told you all these things. I told you what was going to happen, and now they have all happened before your eyes. You've seen it. I'm warning you now. If you're serving in the Nigerian army, and you think you're loyal to Buratai, you think I'm serving my, my Nigeria is not a, a fatherland or motherland to anybody. Nigeria is not a motherland or fatherland to anybody. Nigeria is purely a British creation. A British creation. Because if Nigeria was to be a nation or country, there is no way those that call themselves the presidency Asoro can come out to support illegality in Ondo State. Because they know they are doing it for that. Why do you think they want to avenge and revenge for Salma Dubelo? Why? They knew that Ahmad Bello and, and his, um, his, um, his people, so to speak, were fighting for them. They understood that. At the time, the house of people thought that the Fulani was fighting for them, but today it's very clear. I, are you, are you, um, I asked you a simple question when I began. Are you hearing house of Fulani anymore? No, it's only Fulani, 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 ever, because they have taken over the entire corner. 
That is one thing you need to understand. People must begin to appreciate this. If you are in the Nigerian army and you are serving the Nigerian army, you are only paving the way for the conquest of your village, the rape of your daughters and the abduction of your mothers. I'm telling you this. You are in the Nigerian army, yes. But what the Fulanis have got in store for you is to overwhelm and to conquer you. I feel sorry for those of you who are so foolish that they cannot reason very well. Country people, <laughs> a lot is indeed happening in this country. Well, thank you for staying connected. Yeah, the video long, but this man is said the truth. Looking at everything he said in that video and take a look at what is happening in this country. <laughs> and like I said, some people they clamor for change. Why some they say until this country divide? They can never be peace and they will never be peace. Well, we never can tell if this is going to happen in the next coming years. But <laughs> now only God fee help us. Well, listen to what the man has said. Kindly share your honest opinion regarding everything in the comment section. No grief for Bola Metunubu. Finally, Bola Metunubu don't become our president. And on the other side, Peter Obi can never be the president unless he go back to IPOB to go and support his people. We never can tell if Peter will be, we surely go back. And on the other side, them they fight, make president release Nambi Kalu. But the fear of Nambi Kalu is what stopping all these people or tell what is going to happen should they release Nambi Kalu. In the comments, let us know how you take see the matter a bit. Share your honest opinion. Do you think everything Nambi Kalu said was actually true all all everything just based on lies or probably it's just saying that to brainwash people so that they can you know honor him they can value him they can give him the respect they can support him for this country we don't like to hear the truth share your honest opinion in the comment section thank you very much and please i beg i beg help us to like this video so that you can recommend it and don't forget to share to other different platforms so that more people can get to watch it and once again do well to subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you never miss any important topics or trending news happening in our country thank you once again i'll see you in my next video